My name is Tijen and I'm the moderator for today. And um, our next speaker is going to give us some awareness in terms of AI and sexism because he asked what's wrong with today's AI? Sexism could be the next tech disaster. So hopefully not. But uh, I'm very looking forward to welcome on stage Robert Lacasio, founder and CEO of Life Person. So, Robert, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. How's everyone doing? Thank you for having me here. Um, so, I want to talk a little bit about today about all the challenges that we're seeing with AI and bots and all the scary things that we're hearing about it. A little background on myself. I'm the founder and CEO of a company called Live Person. I invented when you chat online for customer care, uh, that technology back in the late 90s. Uh, took the company public in 2000. We have about 18,000 customers today. And about two years ago, we built a platform to focus on providing very large enterprise customers a way to deliver bots in AI at scale to their, their consumers. And so I have a lot of experience and hands-on experience of working with companies like Nike and T-Mobile and HSBC and Deutsche Telekom on how do you do bots in AI. Um, although that's an important fact that I started a company over 20 years ago, uh, I'm most proud of the fact that uh, Handelsbot wrote an article last year and said that I'm the bot got. So uh, my mother was very proud of the fact that uh, I would get that, that uh, moniker. But um, I've spent like, a lot of time once again, and I want to talk about what is really uh, the challenges that we're seeing right now. Um, AI, as uh, Elon Musk said, is an existential risk for human civilization. There are great challenges right now that we are facing with AI, and a lot of it has to do with the scariness of not knowing what it is. Uh, all we hear about is all the negative things that could happen with it. And so if it's not Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Mark Zuckerberg who are talking about it in a very scary way, there's also been some great research. Pew uh, Research uh, uh, went out to consumers and asked them what do they think about uh, AI, not enthusiastic, think it's, they're worried, scared. Um, the um, Oxford University put out a, a study last year that basically talked about how they can see 47% of jobs disappearing because of AI and, and bots. The Citibank CEO yesterday came out publicly and said tens of thousands of jobs will be lost because of artificial intelligence. We did a, a study uh, this year with about 2,000 consumers and asked them what do they think about bots and AI and we got back 45% of Americans felt that AI is going to be an uprising, there's going to be an uprising of the machines against us. And so when I think of that, and I think about why. There is this thing in technology which I call the hidden hand of technology. And that's that thing called an algorithm. Uh, we've all heard of it. Uh, at times, uh, some of us have built it. But what we know now is that technology doesn't always uh, provide benefits to us or society. Look at Facebook. There's a great debate out there right now that one of the greatest uh, platforms in the world to bring people together actually took us apart. And that hidden hand is the thing that feels like you can't stop it. If you saw Mark Zuckerberg speak about this in front of our Congress in the United States, he said it's going to take five years for us to fix the algorithm. So think of that. We have to live with this for five years. I had my own interesting experience a couple months ago, and I wrote about this in Fortune magazine. I was, um, we have, I have Alexa in my house and I have a two-year-old daughter. And I was talking to Alexa and basically, Alexa turn on the lights, Alexa play music, and I saw my daughter for the first time, she was, I, you know, I never realized that she was so emotional about Alexa. 
she's like starting to smile. Oh, Alexa. And she hears the voice. And she'll even come up and say, Lex. She can't say the, the full words. Go, Lex, Lex, Lex. And she's like, and she gets an emotional connection to Alexa. So to her, Alexa is not a machine. To her, Alexa is a woman voice. It may be even a woman to her in her perspective, like her mother. Now, there, there's research out there right now, and you can, you can search it on Google, where they have shown that children who watch their parents talk to Alexa, they're seeing problems. And they're seeing a lot of times parents will be derogatory. Like if Alexa doesn't give them what they want, they'll say, Alexa, you're dumb. And the children are picking this up, and they're going to the schools and just saying those same words. Last, or about three weeks ago, um, Google had their conference, and in Google Home, they now have a please feature. So now, so your children don't bark orders and be rude, they have to say please to Google Home. It's also a good feature for adults. But you can see Google is even realizing that this is a problem. So I started to think about my daughter and, and the relationship with Alexa, and then I started to ask myself the next question. Why is Alexa a woman? And why are all the home assistants women? Why are they women's voices? So it kind of made me think about who's programming these things? Why would they go ahead and create a female gender? What was the thought process behind it? And I'll, I'll give you a little bit about Amazon. So Jeff Bezos, who's the CEO of Amazon, when they were creating Alexa, said, I want a woman's voice because when he was a kid, he would watch Star Trek. And on Star Trek, the computer on the main holodeck there would have a woman's voice. And he said, that was really cool. So we should have a woman's voice. So now Alexa's in 30 million homes, 30 million homes right now with a women's voice, with a woman's voice. And the impact we know possibly could happen with children, all the issues, without any thought without any thought. I actually feel like it's a little sexist, if I may be honest, and that's what I wrote in my article. It's kind of like you make the home bots women. You give them commands, you tell them what to do. It's like, I feel like we dialed back 50 years about the perspective on women's place in the home. And I have this feeling that the people who create this, which is predominantly technical males, have this perspective that, okay, a, a woman is gonna feel better to talk to when you're giving her commands. Something to think about. So what are we facing? With bots and AI, especially bots, which is the manifestation of, of AI, it's the first time in, in our history as technologists where we've got to assign a gender to our technology. And that's very different than building a website or building an app. A, a website is not a woman. An app is not a man, but when you go ahead and put a bot out in the world, you give it a gender. And that's something to think about. What is the gender it should be? The second thing is there is a lack of diversity in technology as, as we know today. On average, engineering teams have less than 10% are female. 90% are white technical males. In my company, we have about 30% of our engineering team are women. So we're doing better than most companies, but this creates a big problem. If you remember two or three years ago, uh, Google had a feature on the phone where you would take a picture of yourself or take a picture of any item, like a house, and it would say, oh, that's a house. You take a picture of the, that chair and say, that's a chair. Well, some people who are African American took a picture of themselves and it said gorilla. It said gorilla. So think of this. The people at Google, who are not dumb people, whoever was creating that algorithm probably held up the photo, you know, the camera to their face like, oh, this works. Because nobody in that group was of color. And so this is a major problem that we have when we look at the data sets and how we're creating bots and, and using AI. The next part is the brain. For some reason, we are very focused on artificial intelligence basically mimicking human intelligence. And more importantly, the concept, and I think this is what really bothers us, is that our brains are flawed. 
our brains as we know it, they've, they've selected bad presidents. They've, as we have maybe in the United States. They, I thought people in Germany always like when I make that joke, so. Uh, they, they've created wars. Um, the brain is not a perfect tool. It basically is interpreting things that are happening around it and it tries to basically create a sense of reality. It tries to draw a picture of reality. So the concept that artificial intelligence is gonna magnify that, magnify all the good, but also potentially magnify all the bad that happens with our ability to interpret is scary. The clock's ticking, and this is why this is a very, very important topic now, is that basically, um, there is an ability now for every company in the world to scale bots. As in, there is Amazon Alexa, there is Google Home. There are all the messaging platforms right now allow businesses to create bots and deploy them at scale. And this is why this is a very important topic. Apple just released Apple Business Chat about two months ago, which allows a business to connect into a billion iPhone users. Google's about to launch their version of that in a few weeks. You've got WhatsApp is coming out in about three or four months with the same feature. You've got, what, you got uh, WeChat. So right now, this is why this is a very important topic. This is why it's getting a lot of uh, conversations are happening in the world. So I want to give you a little bit of a framework to take back to your uh, businesses or into your lives if you're engineers about creating bots. And that's why I wanted to just be here. I, I have now uh, this uh, lens and filter. When, I, when I'm looking at who's creating our bots, I come with this lens, so I'll share it with you. The first thing is um, diversity. When I look at who creates the bots, if I walk into a room and say, this is our, our bot development group, I, I want to see who's in there. Is it women? Is it men? Is it, is it diff different races? What, what's in the room? Because what we have found is that the best builders of bots are the people who represent the people who will use the bots. For instance, uh, we just built a bot for Lowe's, which is a, a $60 billion company, Home Improvements. And we built a bot that sells grills, sells grills online. And what we did is we actually went to the contact center, they have a contact center, where they have a diverse group of people. These are not even technologists. And we worked with the actual people who are normally selling grills, and they help become bot designers. So they didn't come with a bias. And we actually, we, we split the groups between women and men and all sorts of people. And today that bot, that bot is selling $20,000 a day of grills because we were able to bring the diversity to the building of those bots. The second thing is about gender. Everyone for some reason when they create bots, it seems like 90% of the time they've got to make it a female. Uh, they've, got, they've got to make it a female. Bank of America just launched their bot inside of their banking app and they called it Erica. So what I would say is that you're better off going neutral to start. When we built the grill bot, we called it Grill Master. And we let people just basically think about maybe it's a woman, maybe it's a man, maybe it's something else. It doesn't matter, but we're not going to impose on the consumer a gender. The other thing is that when, it looks, when I look at things like Amazon Alexa, I believe that they should give us choice. As consumers, I should be able to say it's a woman's voice, it's a man's voice, it may be gender neutral. And I think that's the way it's gonna end up going. In this case, this is our grill bot, a transcript from it. Like I said, women also grill. So we want to create Grill Master so the consumer could say, I want it to be a certain gender and not force it upon them. And the third part is about focusing AI on the systems around us and not our brains and not replicating our brains. I think the idea of replicating a human brain or trying to replicate even human consciousness, it's, it's, it's a flawed process. When you look at a human brain, we're just interpreting things around us. We have senses, we have a past, a history. And when things happen, our brain says, it tries to paint a picture of reality for us. I think we're better off enhancing the systems around us, enhancing the things around us that can make us decision make better as a, as a human, that can make our brains understand reality better. So even like a Google map, 
But if you have Google Maps, it really helps me chart a course the shortest distance. That's a good use of AI. I'm looking at the map, there's machine learning in there. My brain now is processing that and it's saying this is the best way. It's, it's giving me the feedback to give me the best way possible, but not trying to replicate the brain. And I think if we knew that, we wouldn't be so scared of this, of AI like we are today. When you think of bots, what I would ask you to think about is it's really a brand that you're putting in the world. When you name it, when you put it out on Facebook Messenger or, in, or as a skill in Amazon Alexa, what I've seen is that people just put it out there and then it doesn't work. And what I ask is that you really think it about it as the brand's voice. And if you think it that way, you put a lot more weight on the creation of it. You know, collective consciousness, and when we think about brand, it's really about the collective consciousness of a bunch of people coming together and thinking, this company is this type of company. If you put a bot out there and all of a sudden everyone's negative about that bot, that's going to have an impact on your companies. And to close, um, we are funding uh, a group called Equal AI. And I'm doing this with Ariana Huffington and a woman called Justine Cassell, who is a professor of AI. Uh, she heads up the school in Carnegie Mellon University. She's actually working with uh, Macron's government in France. They have a head of AI there, and she's helping shape standards. So we're coming together with other leaders, uh, with businesses, and in a couple weeks, if you go back to equalai.org, you'll see some information. What we're going to try to do is just give a bunch of frameworks in which when you're working with AI, when you're in your companies, you can take those and really I think get to a good place. Because in the end, AI bots, all this can help benefit us. It doesn't have to scare us if we get rid of the hidden hand. If we shine a light on that hidden hand and we expose it and we show it and we all feel like we understand what it is. So thank you and have a great day. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. Maybe, uh, stay here, please. Oh. <laughs> Don't leave us. Okay, I have uh, one question, but maybe yeah. you can stay here. Yeah, yeah. Um, what is our role as a society in terms of AI and sexism? I think our role is to direct the focus of it in the systems that we work within in our lives and not trying to replicate the human brain. I think the danger is us trying to replicate ourselves because we know we're flawed. I think right now as humans, and especially as technologists, we should be focused on enhancing the world around us, making things better so we actually can interpret things better. I think if AI is done right, uh, we'll be able to make better decisions, we'll be able to understand the nature of reality better. But right now, I think we should just stop focusing on trying to recreate my brain or my consciousness. And I think we got to focus more on the systems around us. And do you see differences uh, in terms of AI and sexism uh, from country to country, maybe from Germany to states or yeah, there other are. countries? So when you think about, when you think about bots, in the, when they're, they're, they're going to take on a cultural norms. Mm. So how, how a bot introduces itself, how it, uh, how it communicates, we see differences between different countries. So that's the thing, go back to diversity. Mm. Taking a bunch of Americans and having them come here and create a bot would be a disaster, mm. like in Germany. So, and probably the same thing with bringing Germans to the United States. So I think, once again, it's that diversity, it's understanding the people that are going to use the bots, and, th and that's how you get to a, a really good uh, way to create them. Okay, thank you. Thanks for your insightful talk. Big applause thank for Robert. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank Thanks. you very much.